Hey guys, it's Landon from RH. This is the second video I'm doing that show you how I, how we create tie lines from a boundary search drawing. Uh, this is for a parcel we're surveying up in the Sacramento area. It's actually in all Grove. So if you remember in the last video, uh, we just put together our uh, subject. We had our subject parcel line here and our boundary line we're drawing, and then we added the north line of the section and the east line of the section and the uh, south boundary of uh, this old antiquated lot five and we also added the west boundary and we did all those ties mostly off of one map okay most of those ties came off of uh, this parcel map okay and this subdivision map okay so that gave us these ties what we want to do in this video now is we want to add the ties from this pre-construction map for the roundabout because they confirm the position of our section corner here and they also confirm this north and south line of the sorry the north and east line of the section and then we're going to add some line work for our joiners now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to actually i'm going to close this and not save the changes because i want to put all those maps back i pulled some of the maps out uh, so i could make sure i was tracing my tie lines on the, on the right map so i don't want to save those changes i want those maps back in the right place so let's try that uh, we're going to open that again so I'm just kind of toggling back and forth between my search drawing and my line work drawing, right? So we're, we're tracing line work on the search drawing and dropping it into the line work drawing. Okay, so I want to add uh, some ties here uh, from this map. They just confirm our section corner location. Now, this is a little bit tricky, but you remember I held the section corner location from this parcel map to the south. So when I tie my tie line, I have to go from that corner, not this corner. And I'm going to draw over here all the way down okay, to this point. Okay, So that's my north section line on the other side. Okay, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go perpendicular. I'm going to drop that tie line into that monument. Okay, And I found the monument here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go perpendicular. Okay. So uh, now, when I show this distance, I'll have a distance here. I'm not sure which one yet, but we'll show a distance along this section line, probably to this 509. Now, it's going to be two tenths shorter than the record distance on the Mark Thomas map because I held a, held my position for the section corner is, is two tenths over here. This is the section corner for the Mark Thomas map. This is the section corner position that I held. They're basically same direction, north, south. They're just a little different, east, west, you know, and... Uh, two tenths we can measure that but you know it's starting to get starting to get within the air bubble you know that we can't measure that we can't measure okay so uh let's go ahead and uh we're going to just cut these lines and paste them sorry okay and that's just going to show that we tied that pre-con roundabout map down and it fit pretty good. It fit within two tenths of the ties that we had from this map to the south. Okay, and I'm actually going to trim this out, guys, because I don't need to go past this monument. Okay, so we'll be able to show these two found mons. Essentially, we use these two found mons and the record distance on the Mark Thomas map to confirm the position of this section corner was within two tenths of a foot. And, you know, that's worth something. All right, <clears throat> now we want to get in uh, some tie lines for our joiners. So uh, we're going to go back to the search drawing. Okay, now this is a little tricky. Uh, so the way I was putting these deeds in before, um, the way I was putting these deeds in before, I was I was looking for some alternative solutions. So you can see, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this line is actually, there's no angle break here. It should be a smooth line. And you can see that all the deeds, they don't fit together exactly. So there's small differences. That's not uncommon. So, for example, this deed right here is, you know, that's eight tenths south of that same boundary on this deed to the south when I hold the parcel map, right? So, you know, they don't line up exactly. Now, you're going to be able to see those differences because we're going to show a tie line here. It's going to have it's going to have two two different distances on it. One's going to be eight tenths longer than the other, or eight tenths shorter than the other. Okay, but what I have to decide for now is which one of these two lines am I going to hold in my survey has the tie line. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just extend this line 
of my subject parcel down. So in other words, I'm going to hold this line, not this line. So I'm going to hold this tie for my west adjoiner. And uh, I know there's no angle break, so I'm just going to run that in. Sorry, guys. I'm going to run that in to the west boundary of lot 5 that I have established in my line work drawing. Okay. Alright, so I only have one line here. There's two in my search drawing. We don't want to show two lines on our survey, on our record of survey or survey. That's just going to confuse everybody. There's only one line. There's just different record distances to the location of that line. Okay. So now let's get in that actual tie line that runs up between our east adjoiners. Okay. So these are our two east adjoiners. This is our east, immediate east adjoiner and the next adjoiner over on the east. Okay, so uh, I am going to just grab this line. Now you can see there's a little bit of a difference here, north-south, right? I don't care. I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to just trace over that line. And then when we come and paste it in here, right, I want to make sure it fits. So I'm going to say, hey, extend that down to where I have that tie established. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to extend up to where I have this section line established. Okay. Okay. And that becomes my calculated length of that line, okay, which I call a calculated or a calculated from record. Okay. Some other surveyors call that an M. I don't like to call it a measured because I don't have a monument on each end. I like to call it a calculated. Okay. And it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit different than this distance in either one of these uh, adjoiner deeds. It's going to be slightly different because I'm holding some monuments, right? And some record angles and record distances. And so things will be slightly different. The deeds don't all fit together perfect. So we're trying to come up with the best solution we can when we draw these tie lines and then we'll show those slight differences in the record measurements when we annotate our distances. And you'll see that in the down the anode drawing. Okay, so we've got one tie line left for our joiners and it is uh, for this parcel to the south. Now, this is a little tricky. So let me show you why it's a little tricky. If I were to take this south adjoiner per the deed and let me see how I want to do this. Move it to, if I take the, the Kogo of the uh, south adjoiner deed and move it to the Kogo of my deed, there's an overlap with the parcel to the, with this parcel map to the south. Okay, well, I think that's kind of, that, in this particular case, I, I don't think that's the right solution. Although you notice it fits that monument a little better, doesn't it? Yeah, you know what? I didn't notice that before. So I like that it fits that monument a little better. Okay, so there's we have two choices here. We can draw this line, the south boundary of our joiner. We can draw it here where it is per this parcel map, or we can draw it here where it is per the grant deed and pretty close to that mon. So let's just pull that distance. So I've got two, two alternatives here. i got to choose. That's three tenths. It's way better than eight tenths. So this monument actually fits this south adjoiner grant deed and our grant deed better than it fits this parcel map. Yeah. So you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I am going to actually hold this south line of our adjoiner at the distance in the adjoiner deed. So in other words, there's two ways to come up with this line I just drew. You can hold these monuments to the south and come up the record on this parcel map, or you can hold our section line and come south the two record D distances. Man, our two D distances added together fit this monument better than the parcel map does. Um, so that's what I'm going to hold. Okay, now I'm not surveying the south adjoiner. Okay, I'm not. I didn't actually survey the south adjoiner, um, but I think that's the best fit. Now, the reason I'm worried about it is because you know well, you can't just survey your parcel. You also have to look at your adjoiners. So that's where I think the best position is for that south boundary of our south adjoiner, right? And hey, look. I mean, you got to look at this. Look at this record line work. When you just Kogo stuff per record, 
and start dropping it on some mons, you know? You got, this is an older area, hasn't been, you know, you got to remember, these have never been surveyed on a file map. You know, like, yeah, this is an older parcel map. Some of this stuff doesn't fit, you know? Like, yeah, doesn't fit. Like, like, let's, just, let's just see what this difference is over here. You know? That's a 1.7 foot difference. So, you know, you're not going to get stuff to fit together perfect. So you got to decide what do you hold, right? In this case, I held the record information in these two deeds in the section line that I established. I held that over this distance from this center line to the south line, right? So this guy, what happened is this guy's measurements, you know, where he put this, this north line of his sub doesn't fit the the, the D distances in between here don't fit nicely in between where he put this line and where he put the section line. They don't fit. The deeds have more room. But when I hold the deeds, man, fits that monument better, doesn't it? Ew. So I'm glad I tied that monument. I need to I need to do a little more digging into that. Um, we need to we need to take another look at this map. But I don't want to do that in this video. We'll do that in the in the boundary resolution video. All right. So that was a lot. That was like I don't know. 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes uh, of work just to come up with these tie lines, right? And we got a little homework to do. You know, I got to take another look at this monument. It's possible this is a monument, not a record. I found it off a half a foot, but I'm, I'm going to go look at the pictures again. I'm almost positive that was a pipe. It didn't have a cap, but it was a pipe. You know, this one fit pretty good within a couple tenths. This one fit good within three tenths, I think. Fit pretty good for this area. Um, this monument now um, fits within three tenths. I got to trim that out, don't I? Okay, so you remember now, this is where I had the line when I held the monument. I decided to, um, uh, let's make sure, let's go back and look at that one more time. Yeah, so so now now I'm holding it per the, the D to the north, right? Because it, it's pretty close. It's within two tenths. So that's getting pretty close to my measurement error. So what I'm going to say here, and I know different surveyors have different opinions about this, but this is within two tenths. Um, this is a fast static observation. Um, I'm going to probably say I found that monument on this line because it's, it's pretty close. In other words, I could move the deed line up to the mon, or I could say I found the mon on the deed line. In this case, this monument is pretty close, so I'm probably going to hold the record and say I found it on the deed line. Okay. But I'm going to look at this one because this is this one monument doesn't fit very good. I got to take a closer look. All the rest of these fit pretty good. I want to make sure I've got that 15 foot dedication pinned down. Okay, so this is our boundary line we're drawing. It's got the subject fee parcel, got the tie lines. Now we'll probably change this line type to be section lines before we're done here. Let's see if we have, I don't know if we have a section line line type in, in this template. Let's see if we do. Yep, we do. Uh, quarter section. PLSS section right there. Boom. Okay. All right. So I'm pretty happy with this. This is ready to go. Um, so what happens at my shop is we'll send this to our junior mapper. And they'll do the initial annotation drawing with the crow's feet and the bearing distance labels and the monument symbols and the monument descriptions. And what we're going to get back is we're going to get an annotation drawing that just has a single distance for each line. And then what we got to do is we got to go back in and look at the search drawing and figure out what distances, record distances or calculated record distances are important to show here or measured because uh, that's part of the art of explaining how you put the boundary together. Now, in a lot of surveys, filed surveys, that's all you get. You just get Here's my calculator, my measured, here's the records, and you got to figure out, did the surveyor hold record, yes or no? On my map, we actually try and include a, a, a little narrative, uh, so what we call some boundary resolution notes that, that walk you through that, in addition to showing the different distances. So we'll do that. Um, so as an example, um, we're going to show this distance here is going to be the distance per RD, right? And, it, and it'll also be calculated to show that I held that record distance, but... The distance from here down will show a calculated that will be less than the record per this parcel map, right? And the reason why is because this line is south of where that guy put the parcel map. 
put the put the put this boundary on the parcel map. So my distance, my calculated distance from here to here is going to be about a half a foot shorter than the record distance from here to here on the parcel map. So what what that tells you is the retracing surveyor is hey, I held this deed distance for these two deeds and I shorted this parcel map. Right? And the reason I did that is is because of the monument that I found that fit the deeds actually better than it fit the parcel map. Okay. And again, you got to remember we're talking about five tenths. This is an old parcel map. This was an undeveloped agricultural area. People weren't worried about a half a foot when these maps were done. So essentially, if you find the monument within a half a foot, you found it where the surveyor intended it to be. And I know a lot of surveyors don't understand that concept. But all right, and like I said, if I get time, I'm not even sure if these these two videos are going to make the cutting board floor, but if they do. Uh, I want to make time and go in and look at each of these deeds and um, explain how I put the search drawing together and explain the way the deeds kind of interact with each other and how the deeds fit the maps because uh, I think that would be good. But you know that, that'd be an hour. That's an hour hour video, right? A couple half hour videos. Um, but you can see now at least how, um, you know, it's really important. you got to make some important judgment calls on a resolved boundary survey like this about where you put these tie lines, right? Because you got to remember, the tie line geometry that I come up with, that's what determines the calculated distance values we show, right? And that's why at this point, um, I'm, I'm primarily the one that, that goes through this step of taking a search drawing into a a boundary line work drawing at my shop. My partner Danny does that. He's almost licensed and he's had lots of practice at it. I'm comfortable letting him do it if I peer review it. But everybody else has to sit, you know, if they're doing this, they're doing it with me sitting behind their shoulder, right? And that's okay because it's a really important step. You know, coming up with these tie lines uh, in the right location so you can show the right calculated distances is almost as important as coming up with the, with the geometry of the subject parcel itself. Because right? these tie lines are going to show other surveyors how your subject boundary, your subject parcel boundary fit with the surroundings, right? And that that's important. That's an important part of evaluating the how good the how, what the quality level is of the resolved boundary is how it fits with everything around it, right? So in this case, I know I've got. I'll try and link to the video I do on a resolved boundary matrix. But in this case, lot five is our resolved boundary matrix, right? Everything within lot five of that old sub. And and if I had decided that this west boundary of lot five was in play, it wasn't in this case for the reasons I mentioned, but if it was, then our resolved boundary matrix would have expanded to include this whole row of lots here along the north part of the section. Okay, I was able to reduce the footprint of my resolved boundary matrix. In other words, the number of parcels I had to look at because I was I felt that the, that the occupation and the monuments on this West boundary of Lot Five were the were the best evidence. I didn't need to go prorate over a mile on some ancient subdivision map. All right, guys. I know that video isn't isn't going to be for everybody, uh, especially if you're a beginner. That you're, that video is going to lose you. But um, if you've had some time, you know, working on record boundaries and 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 some, you know, got a couple years of experience working with, on boundary surveys. You, hopefully, you can follow these couple of videos and see uh, how we come up. Uh, with these tie lines in our line work drawing here at our HR boundary line work drawings.